Yo, yo, what's up, Square Pit Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Bob DeBono. He's here, and we discuss playing uh, his, his plays. He does a Trump impression and touring with YG and uh, Kendrick Lamar, making friends with black people and uh, dating a cop's daughter. So it was a yeah. really interesting, a little off the beaten path, but we loved it. It was a good, one of those, you know, breaks from everything else. Yeah, it was a fun show, great stories. But also, uh, when we're done with that, if you want to join us, the show continues over at Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. We do a lot of bonus content. We answer listener mail. And uh, this week's episode, after Bob is done, we do the uh, Patreon episode where we discuss what happens when a woman leaves a marriage. We do an actual kind of a real time a breakdown of a consultation that you got and uh, what you should do when your wife asks for time to find herself and uh and how that affects the marriage and also the, the the expectations of what a man has to do in a relationship. So join us over patreon.com slash manschool202. That helps us out a lot. We appreciate it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sex World Revolution is being podcasted, and I... I'm excited. Nice. Um, nice. We got, a, we got a special guest, Harry. And I know I've said that 500 times before, mm-hmm. but this time I really mean it. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. Hi, first and foremost, how you doing, Harry? You good? Doing excellent, Dante. I'm doing excellent. I have a tough time keeping these gators down, but other than that, excellent. Dope, dope, dope. Um, I want to get into it because um, this dude I'm, we got on the show today, uh, a comedy uh, a Road dog, one of my road dogs. Um, this dude's been in the game. What now, Bobby? What is it now? Uh, two weeks, two weeks. Been two doing weeks. it about two weeks. You got you got really good. You got, yeah, the hot uh, TikTok give it up for, video that took off, and now uh, <laughs> one now he, TikTok video him. blew up, and you're a comic. Uh, we give it up for, for my boy now. Bob DeBono. What up, Bobby? Hey, but man, how are you? You're how great. you been, Bobby? You good? Age, Dante. You don't age. You get better looking every time I, I see. I only. I wish I felt as uh, horrible as I look. <laughs> good to see you, brother. Good yeah. to see you. Good to see you. So, what's going on in the world of Dante Nero? Oh man, I, you know. I mean, you know, nothing. You know, I live a quiet life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing about you is quiet. You're like me. There's nothing about you that's nothing quiet. You still on the road, bro? I mean, uh, thank God, thank God, Trump is a racist. You still got work. <laughs> There's always going to be racism, Dante. Therefore, I will always have a job. <laughs> I just so the fans know that uh, Bobby does one of the most amazing uh, Trump impressions and. Try, you know, as much as Trump pimps everybody else, Bobby is pimping Trump, and he not, he's not giving him none of the proceeds. None of them. <laughs> he gets nothing. Screw <laughs> that guy, man. <laughs> but Bob, Bobby, is you still working? They still hiring you? And, 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 and You know, you know, for those that are listening and that don't know, like kind of like the evolution of this, it, it literally was me creating a character for an SNL audition. Uh, and they were like, oh, you got to do something contemporary. You can't walk in doing like a, a Nicholson. Of- right, 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 <laughs> right. In, hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Here I am. Hired. You can't do that. You can't do that Latino. You can't walk in going, hey, is that Norm McDonald there? <laughs> man, you man, I want to be on SNL there. <laughs> That'd be great, there. Yeah. But you got to walk in with something contemporary. And I remember being like, "I got to come up with a character. Like, who's really hot?" What year was this? What year was this? Two thousand, early two thousand sixteen. Sixteen, maybe, maybe even fifteen. Like twenty right. to fifteen. And I remember going on like other shows and people like Kurt Metzger, another comedian. Sure. You know, being like, you got you got Trump down yet? You got to get Trump. He's running. You know, he's running for president. Uh-huh. And, and of course, he was like, he was a buffoon. It was like this guy's running for president. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So every show wanted to have like a podcast and um, talk shows. Were like, you got to bring someone on that can do the Trump. You know. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I got to work on Trump. So I started working on Trump. Took me four months. Finally, get the voice down. And then, like, I pitched it to Rory. Uh, Al Benice, who worked over at the Nightly Show, uh-huh. and I'm like, well, they do stuff that's political. I'm like, hey, if you ever need a Trump, I think uh, I think I got it down. Yeah, 
thing you know, like he pitched it to Larry two weeks later. I come back from Mexico on vacation. They're like, hey, they want you to come in and like read for this thing. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, shit. OK, so I go in, read for it. And then that night I'm in front of a live audience, you know, on comedy. Let me let me give the background. Rory Albanese is the guy who created the nightly show with Larry Wilmore. Um, we just had Mike Yard on there, so he was one of the main guys on it. And so, so you know, this is like two insider, but go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, they love the Trump. They bring me in, I do a reading. That night I'm on the show. Next thing you know, they offer me like a contract. I'm like the Donald Trump on the show for like that season. Mm -hmm. And then every week I'd come on and, uh, and I would do like this Trump appearance and it was great. And Larry Wilmore, really liked it a lot and it was it was it was great and then the mm -hmm. show goes off the air and i'm thinking my phone is going to be ringing off the hook right to get all these snl they're all going to want me and for like eight months the phone did not ring and i wow. was like holy crap like how how is this like the hottest character i've been on every show doing this mm -hmm. but i think once he won it, it, there was such a hangover. It was less fun it was, it was less early fun on it was like hilarious it was yeah like, yeah because oh, it was a buffoon Right. It was it, right. Exactly. It was it was it was a joke. It was hilarious. And then when he won, it wasn't so funny anymore. And right. I mean, Colbert practically cried on his show one night. Right. Right. True. And, uh, and, all, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, crap, like this guy's president. And then they wanted to control it. So they didn't want to bring any. This is my opinion. They didn't want to bring anyone on to make him funny or mm -hmm. make him lovable. They wanted to control it in the way to right. control it was all of the hosts were doing their own Trump impression. Right, right, right. Lucky as it was. Um, and then less, and then SNL wanted to bring on someone for the ratings, so they brought in Alec Baldwin. Right, right, um, right. And that was the beginning of it. But then after like six, seven months, once they realized, okay, we gotta we gotta, you know, Trump's president. We're gonna have to deal with this. Yeah. So then I went on the view, I toured with Kendrick Lamar for a month with rapper YG lived on a Really? Park. How did I, I didn't even know about this. What the oh. This is this is up your alley. This is okay. up your alley. So, I'm getting all this stuff. I go on the View. I uh, I did Jimmy Kimmel. I do all this stuff, and and now people are you know hiring me left and right. I'm getting hired for all these big events, and I get an email one day, and there th this guy's like, "Hey, I'm YG's manager, Rory. Would you be interested in doing an 18 city, sold out arena tour with YG, who's opening for Kendrick Lamar?" Uh, 2017, um, would you be in, and I don't, it's, it's going to sound white. I have no idea who Kendrick Lamar is. Okay. All right. I thought he was a linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> so, I, so I'm like, why would they want, what, what does a football guy want me right. to go with him and to do some tour? It doesn't right, mean, right, right, right. I had to go look him up because I was like, I, I, I don't have that. I have. David Lee Roth and Van Halen. I, that's, I have Ozzy <laughs> it's, not your, it's not your wheelhouse. I'm, I'm, my wheelhouse is like metal. I don't even know what this. So I, so I, I start calling people. I'm like, oh, this thing, Kendrick. And they're like, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you call, Bobby? Who'd you call that we knew? I was calling. Actually, I called. Like First, I called my girlfriend, Denise. I said, Denise, uh, I got this email. It's probably something stupid. This Kendrick Lamar. She goes, Kendrick Lamar. Oh my <laughs> God, he's like big. He's huge. Yeah. And I was like, I oh, I thought he played. No, he doesn't play football. You idiot. He's like a <laughs> hip hop guy. Of course, she didn't know much more than I did, but she knew. At now least wait, let me just point out to the crowd that uh, that is the voice. That Bobby will do for any woman that's talking to him. <laughs> yeah, including that's his go-to. Including my mother. <laughs> I'll double down. Even my mother, I'll do that voice. <laughs> so anyway, I call them back. I, I email them back. They're like, in one week, we would you would come out to San Jose, and you would start doing Trump, and then it's San Jose, then we go to Sacramento. And then we're going to be, I mean, we're going right across the country, Utah, Nebraska. We're going to end up at American Airlines Arena in, in uh, Miami. We're going to Canada. 30,000 people a night, and I'm doing Trump on stage. I'd walk out. I would do Trump for like two and a half minutes. And I, it was like a rally. I'd walk what out. YG would do his, the first like seven songs of his concert. Right. I walk out. Crowd's going nuts. Stage goes black. And then... All of a sudden, the crowd sees me dressed as Trump, uh -huh. and they start going nuts. You can see it if you type in, you know, on, on YouTube, 
Okay. Type in YG FDT for fuck Donald Trump. Uh huh. Um, in 2017, you'll see videos of me come up. And then there'd be a cacophony of people flipping out, screaming, yelling, laughing, crying. People, everyone getting triggered in a different way. Right. And I would go into Trump like I was at a rally, you know, and I come right. out and be like, you know, it's unbelievable. Look at this turnout. And we've got a great turnout here tonight. We've got about 17 million people here tonight. <laughs> and this is unbelievable. And and then I'd start insulting them, you know, like all you people, many of you women, I'm going to be groping your pussies tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Many pussies and many of you people I'm looking out there. I think you're Hispanic. You're going to be <laughs> on the other side of the wall very quickly. I can tell you that. <laughs> We're so, throwing you the hell out. I can tell you that. You're horrible. You're horrible people. <laughs> so how does we all know that. Shitholes. Total shitholes. <laughs> I don't know so, what the hell you are. You're Hispanic. You're black. Get the hell out. <laughs> I so started insulting the crowd, and yeah. I'm like the heel. It's like a wrestling. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm going at them and I'm shitting on them. And meanwhile, people get, they get more. People are throwing bottles at me, and uh, um, and then YG walks out behind me, and then you hear the music kick in. Fuck Donald Trump, uh -huh. which was a nothing song. And then right. in this last election, it that song up. became like that became this this giant anthem. For get Trump out of there, right, right, Donald Trump, and so he would sing the song. The crowd would go nuts, and he would chase me off the stage. And he has a sidekick. Um, uh, what the hell was his name? Slim Four Hundred. I don't know. If yeah, yeah, is. yeah. And Slim would come out with YG, and Slim would like chase me <laughs> and kick me <laughs> in the ass. <laughs> I would run off. And anyway, we did this for four weeks. I lived on a bus. We had six buses. Kendrick Lamar had two buses. Uh, four buses. YG had two buses. I lived on a bus with two strippers, two white guys, four or five of YG's friends, which are all bloods from Compton. Uh -huh. Me, the white guy dressed as Trump. And how was that? How was that whole that experience? It was. It was. It was nuts. <laughs> like and what? Like so. Here's here's. I'm going to tell you something that's interesting. And I mean, I'm, uh, Harry's going to get mad at me because uh, mm. this is a relationship show. Yeah. But I, 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 I can't, yeah. Harry, I can't. Like, this is an interesting enough story. I don't mind this. This is right. not too, we're not, you know, we're not talking about open mics in New York in 2000. I don't right. mind. So, don't mind. um, yeah. this is a funny thing, right? So I have, uh, I have a, a, a friend of mine, friend of mine, white dude. And what, and you, you and I have had, like conversations about what we would we talked about it and yeah. and 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 here's the thing it's what i really what i really always loved about you bobby is that there was a there was a willing to understand a different point of view like you were like well this is how i think it is i don't know what what do you think and we had these up at danger fields we had these conversations and yeah. and so I have, I have a friend of mine that i worked with for many years right and I just recently this week actually and I was like have you ever seen did you ever see Django like did you ever see the movie I, that I never saw it okay and then I asked him did you ever see is that, a movie about, can I ask you, is that a movie about like blacks yeah yeah I would never watch that <laughs> Never. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I, I, no, but I asked him but I asked I said did you ever yeah. see 12 years a slave yeah. he goes he goes no yeah. I go, did you ever see uh, Rosewood? He goes, no. Right. I go, so these are all like iconic black movies, black movies about yeah. Selma, all of these. This is our history. And what I realize in a lot of ways, um, what, what the, the, the divide is so wide because of the fact that your experience is so infinitely different than my experience in, 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 in comedy, in the world, in, in general, because these are movies that there's not a black person that didn't see them. Right, and right. these are movies that white people have no idea that some, I mean, they might have heard it, but yeah. they haven't, but this is this is kind of these movies that were, that were 
true stories breaking into movies and you know rosewood was where they burnt you know this uh kind of like the emma till thing and they burnt the whole town up and 12 years of saving these are all stories that we relate to because it's historically the same and yeah. and he's a liberal dude like he this dude hates trump but he hasn't experienced any of these films in any way because you can't you can't be a black dude and not know white shit like you can't play a black dude and not know. Like you may not listen to Van Halen, but you know Van Halen. Well, you the, know, and the reason being is because if you're a minority in this country, then the majority is constantly you're surrounded by the majority. Right, you're right. Constantly being exposed to their music, their culture, their food, right. their their ways of thinking, and where and you have to navigate it. You, yeah. you, you, yeah. you, I mean, I, this, I can't tell you how many times I've been at a bar, uh, doing karaoke with white dudes singing free bird, you know, <laughs> so, and I'll go one step further. I think if you live in any country where there's a, the majority rules and the, and the minority does not rule, the majority always has, there's always an arrogance. There's always an undercurrent of an arrogance that yeah. they're better. Because yeah. they're the majority, right? And right. Well, well, no but, interest in learning about the minority, but the minority has to know about the majority, right? Because you have to navigate. Patrice used to say he would go to Europe and go, "What do you? Can anybody make a stake in in this country? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, <laughs> can't yeah. you speak English in Italy? What the fuck is wrong with you? So there's an arrogance to that. Yeah. So what's it? I guess the question I'm asking you is your you're hanging out with a bunch of rappers and strippers and stuff. Yeah. You're in this world. Yeah. What did you learn from being in this world? Like, what did you see different? Or I, did I, you? That is a great question. I haven't been asked that. And I've done a lot of interviews about stuff like this. And the n number one thing is I tell people is that, um, first of all, we all grow up with our stereotypes of other people. Right. It's not even racism. It's just a stereotype. Of, well, it's a bias. It's a bias. It, it's a bias. Personal it could, bias. It could be an ignorance that you just don't understand because you haven't been taught. Right. You, you have no experience. Right. Just like you said, people don't watch these movies. It doesn't even a guy could be the most liberal person in the world, but that doesn't mean he's not racist. Right. It also doesn't mean that he's not ignorant. Um, he might be fighting for causes but he doesn't even know what he's fighting for because he's not educated in certain areas. Right. So for me, wait, I would just, I got to stop. Yeah. And cause I, that's yeah. such a profound statement that you have a guy who's liberal as shit, but he could still be racist yeah. simply because of the fact of his, the scope of his knowledge and the scope of his experience. Like, look, Harry's been hanging out with me. We've been doing this podcast for 10 years yeah. and Harry will still go. Let me, let me ask you something. He will, but we, we have that dialogue. It's kind of the same kind of thing that we would have when we would be around each other. And you would go, well, don't you think such and such and such? But it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a good faith discussion. Yeah. yeah. I want to learn. I want to know what you think. I'm sorry, Harry. Go ahead. It's not done. It's not done with the intent to uh, argue or battle or debate. It's je just just right. to learn knowledge to learn. Yeah. Right. There's a big difference between going. Yeah between going, hey, let me ask you about this thing I heard or or going, you know, this thing I heard proves that you're wrong. You right. know, this thing that they said on Fox News or whatever. Right. Uh, we, me, blah, blah. We, we never I watch Fox News, but I'm giving you an extreme example. Yeah, me and me and Bob, Bobby, we didn't. It wasn't an argument. Like sure, we yeah, were trying to win the argument. No. We were yeah. just trying to really exchange things, have an exchange of ideas. Of how do you see uh, this? Course. And I, and I want to say this, too, like when I was younger, it's also there's a part of it is, for me was maturity. Like when I was younger, I get into a conversation probably out of my own insecurity of not knowing everything mm -hmm. I had to win. I had to be right. Right. Because admitting I'm wrong made me feel I was less of a person, maybe less of a man. Right. Uh, you know. Of, a, of an educated person with the person I was talking to. And at some point I surrendered to the fact as I got older that I don't know everything and I'm, and I'm always going to be learning. And what I feel today could very well easily change tomorrow because right. the world is constantly changing. There's right. new ideas, there's new experiences. So now I go into every conversation as look, I don't know if I'm right. I, this is what I know based on my experiences because they're way different than yours or and the next guys. 
but I'm just going to tell you how I feel because at the end of the day, as human beings, we all have the same feelings. We all have the same emotions about right. sadness and guilt and anger. And we just get there differently based on the experiences that we were raised with. Right. So okay. your life way different than mine, my, not because of our color. See, that's well, that's I mean, it I, is because of our color, but it it, 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 it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. For instance, if I'm a white guy and I live next door to you and you're and you're a black person and we grew up in the same neighborhood, guess what? We and we have the same we come from the same socioeconomic background. Right. Right. You know what? There really isn't that much difference. But I feel society constantly reinforces the differences instead of pushing the the, the things that we have that are similar. Because, well, I mean, I think that there are definitely I would I would have to push back. I think that there was definitely different things. I, I, I'll give you an example. Yeah. I, one of my best friends, I, you know, I worked for the phone company for 20 some years. My yeah. best friend that I worked, worked with, um, he gets a call. This was a time when his, his son was fucking up and his son broke into a VFW. And I don't forget, I want you to answer that question that I asked you because that's yeah. It's yeah. really, yeah. Um, he broke into a VFW. He stole uh, some old guns that were in a case some yeah. gold coins and some liquor, right? Right. And he got a call. We were at work, and he says, "Oh, my son, blah 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 blah." But you know, this was like youthful fucking stupidity, you know. Um, and and the, the the detective called him and says, "Listen, we got your son. He did this, but look, we know you're part of the fucking, we know you're part of the neighbor." This was like he lived in uh in Jersey, in in in, Some in South small Jersey, town in suburban yeah. Jersey, and he goes, yeah. "We know you. We know you're a working guy. Could come in and talk to us, and we'll work something out." Boom, boom. And I instantly was like, "Don't fucking go. Get a lawyer, and do not. Police officers are not on your side, right? Get a. Do not go and speak to this guy without a lawyer." Now, is your and friend he, a white guy? Or he he's a white guy. He's a white guy. Yeah. yeah. He's a white guy, and he's from Denver. So you're giving New him black advice. He's from Denver, New Jersey. So you're it's a little him. white town he lives, and I'm giving I him. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, black, I go, black legal advice. I, I mean, do not go without a lawyer. Don't say nothing. Don't talk to this because their job is not their job. Like they, their, their economics is attached to the collars. Like the the way you move up the rank right. is how you lock people up. Right. Yeah. yeah. He goes. Oh, I'm gonna go talk. I'm gonna please don't. Go get a, just get a lawyer because getting a lawyer can't hurt you. <laughs> it that right. could never hurt, right? Yeah. He goes, they talk to him. You get a white lawyer. Don't get a black lawyer. Well, I, I mean, I was gonna say something else, but I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not yeah, even going. Yeah, yeah. Just joking around. Um, but um, he goes. They say bring the coins back, bring the liquor. Yeah, I mean, whatever the lick is, bring it back and yeah. we'll uh, and, and, you know, he did a little community service yeah. and that was it. Right. For stealing guns, guns right. and money. Right. And it was over five hundred dollars worth of money. So it was a felony. Class so one your, felony. Your point being, if this was if he was a, a young black kid, it would have been he would have been, been totally different. He would have, they would have put out an, a warrant for him. They got him, and they would have picked him up. Yeah, him and I, I agree with you. I, yeah. I agree with you. I, I think there's a, definitely systemic um, racism that is built into our society, and it's not just America. If you go to any country, like I was saying, yeah, the yeah, it's the minority. Cool. Yeah. It's the majority is usually the people socioeconomically that have more money than the minority. Yeah, it's also interesting you talk about the socioeconomic because you were also talking about the the, major, the majority, but doesn't get treated the same as the rich people. Rich white folks don't don't have the same experience as poor white people. But I, right. I want you to answer this question because yeah. um and I, and because I, here's I, the thing you're you're in you're. Yeah. Yeah, behind man. enemy lines. I mean, I don't know if I should say that, right? But you know what I'm saying? What did you what did you learn from it? What did you see? So so like I grew up in Danbury, Connecticut, in a school that was very diversified. I had friends that were black, Hispanic, Vietnamese, I mean, all Portuguese, all different types. I didn't grow up with Yeah, but I understand it, but I'm saying you're like look, you're in this a rap, like, you're in a I bus. Am, that's what I'm saying to you. Yeah, yeah. Like I grew up not ever feeling ever racist toward any ethnicity. That's not how I was raised. Right, right, right. But you could, but through ignorance, right, you still have yeah. the stereotypes that are based on really 
things that you had heard, but you never lived. And, and they're and, and it's not because you're racist. You just don't know. And they had the same thing about me. So when I went there and I showed up in San Jose for the first night and right. they're, they're like, here's the bus. And I thought, you know, they, 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 they kind of tricked me. They're like, yeah, it's going to be hotels. And then, you know, we're, we're going to go from on the bus to city to city. Uh-huh. Uh, you'll, there'll be hotels too. Well, yeah. It, there was, I stayed in, a, in, in almost a month, I stayed in a hotel one Once. night and uh, we didn't even sleep over. It was right. a layover for four hours. Wow. We slept on a, we had 12 people living on a bus. We were like in little beds, like, like little pizza ovens on top of each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, now here's the thing. I see them, I get on a bus and this is right. Just like you said, this is not just black, white. This is white guy who grew up in the suburbs on a bus with, with Crips. Blood, yeah, Bloods gang members from uh-huh. Compton. And I don't, and I think when they say YG, I think he's like manufactured, like, oh, they're trying to make him hard. <laughs> That's how they're selling him, right? Because who's running the music industry? It's white right. people usually. Right, right, right. Them. Why, would they, why would they bring this, this, this right. hard, this, this right. gangbanger in the game? So I, of course, I get there and I, I remember I get it, pulling up in an Uber. I just came from the airport and outside the bus was like 30 guys and they were, they couldn't look any harder. It looked like something <laughs> from, it looked like a prison yard yeah. where people were out just like hanging out. Right. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Again, I didn't care, but I was like, I didn't, I, my fear was, are they going to accept me? Right. Because I don't know if they accept people like me. And I got on the bus, and over the next couple of weeks when we were there, they first of all, when I'm out of makeup, they were still talking, referring to me as Donald Trump. Right, right. Oh, that's funny. To me on the bus, yo, yo, fuck Trump, fuck Trump, fuck Trump, nigga, fuck Trump. So they were calling me, and it was like, dude, I, I'm Bob. I'm not. I'm just a character. You know, it's a, it's a parody, right? Right, you know, right, right. I come so out. they they thought you were the guy. They, it was almost like they treated. They were so triggered by it that they were thought. So how did once they got to know you? What? How did that? So so here's the beauty of it. So after the the whole time I was on the bus, they never. I used to get off and I would call my mom. I would call my girlfriend. I was like, they don't want anything to do with me. Mm-hmm. I would. We get on the bus. We'd pull in. And they never, they would just nod, you know, but no one was befriended me. No one wanted to hang out with me. No one was like, let's go get lunch. And I learned early on that those, you know, where they come from, number one, and, and the manager, the tour manager is white. I mean, white is, I mean, he looks yeah, yeah. really tall, skinny white guy. But I realized that the world that they come from, they don't know a lot of white people. Right. Well, that's my guess. Because they come from the streets. Of well, they know, they know plenty of white people, but those white people that they know, are oppressive and in positions of power and admit they're cops. Right. They're the or, ones that are harassing right. them. Or they're the white guys at the music, at the label yeah. that are like- That are fucking you know, them. Right, that are, yeah, right, right. That are constantly trying to make money off them. So yeah. I don't think they trust that. Right, right, right. Um, so when they saw me, there was definitely a, a huge wall of distrust of like, this guy's an outsider, who is he? And they didn't really, they didn't want to let me in. And here right. I am, I'm vulnerable. I'm by myself living on a bus. Wow. I want nothing to connect with everyone. I want to connect. I want a sense of self-belonging. I want brotherhood. And you do that anyway. That That's your yeah, MO. That's and I mean, I that's am. why we're friends, you know. Yeah, that's who I am, yeah. So yeah. Uh, there was one guy that I got friendly with that there was one, one guy, and they used to call him Buddha. And Buddha thought he th- – see, here's the, the funny thing. When you have two people f- coming from two different worlds, whether you're white you're black, you're, you're, you're age. Well, that doesn't really mean, it doesn't have to be race. It just be culture. Um, in America, they saw me, they, there was a curiosity. Right. You know? yeah. like, who is, cause they who don't, is this motherfucker? Yeah. Because they, they don't, the, the, the same ignorance that I had about them, they had about me. Right. They had probably every stereotype in the world, white guy, privileged, right. sub, you know, from the suburbs, looks coppish, you know, does <laughs> Trump on our show. And I'm looking at them like, you know, thugs gangbangers yeah, yeah. so i'm going there trying to connect with them but there was a distrust so over the period of the month that i was with them they got i had a, i had a little situation with one of them <laughs> where they i would come in the, the to the uh we would be in the um the back room the, the green room uh the locker room before the show mm-hmm. and yg thought i was hilarious 
but he's mm. a very quiet guy. Right. And, and all of his friends, they just were like, they had to put up with me because I had to go on stage right. every night. They needed Right, right, right. Me. But no one was my friend. But this one guy, Buddha, got friendly because he was he was almost infatuated with my whiteness. Right. And he'd all these <laughs> words. He'd be like, yo, we'd be chopping it up in the back. I'm like, chopping it up. What are we doing? <laughs> Somebody, what are we talking about? He's like, no, chop it up. We 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 we're talking. We're rapping. So like every day, he was teaching me new words uh-huh. on the street, and I and he was so thought it was so hilarious that I knew nothing about what he was talking about. Right, 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 right. I was like a little. I was like a little child. He was taking under his wing that he was teaching me the rules of the street, and through me, he found that I was just hilarious because that right. was always funny. And uh, anyway, so that was the only guy that I got friendly with, but. There was a lot of mistrust, and one night they were breaking. Like they were, you know, they, they all like to break each other's balls and everything. And they're like, "Oh, Trump with that wig, he like a transvestite looking, and he like a tranny." So for fun, I thought again, ignorance, <laughs> I went over to one of them with the Trump wig on and pretended to blow him <laughs> in the middle of everyone in the locker room. Oh my guys God. Were there, no, you can't do that. All black, and I pretend I stick my head between the guy's legs. Like I'm gonna give him a blow job. Uh-huh. Everyone's like, "Yo, shit! He didn't just do that!" Oh my god! They're like jumping around, going crazy. Oh shit! Oh shit! And they're going nuts. So <clears throat> I think it's hilarious. I mean, right. and everyone's like, "Oh, I can't believe he did that!" Oh shit, Trump! Trump be giving him a blow job. Trump be <laughs> blowing that motherfucker. Oh shit! So later that night, Slim Four Hundred. And the bus is furious at me. We get the right. shows over. We're all on the bus. He's like, "Yo, motherfucker, you don't be doing that shit. You don't be, you don't be making no gay jokes." So I'm like, "No, no, 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 you don't get it. I'm a comedian. I'm just fucking around." You guys said I was a tranny, had the wig on. I was just joking. He's like, "You don't do that shit." And he got so mad. And then I'm so then I was like, so then the New York came out of me, and I was like, "Well, you also, you, I mean, you did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for how many years now? I mean, well, I, I, I still do it, although I haven't been back in almost." A, two years because of covid but uh-huh. yeah but but not, not only that but i you know like you have your 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 you have your your ethos your your values your your sense right 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 you are. and you're not backing down not because right. you want to be a tough guy you're like look i i'm i'm dignified dignified i have my own self-respect and i was like look i'm trying to talk to you i, I was just kidding like i wasn't trying to make you know upset you uh-huh. and, and then we kept going on and he was like kind of in my face and then he was like, you don't do that shit. And I was like, bro, like I'm from New York. Like I grew up, I have a lot of friends everywhere. You, you don't, you're not going to intimidate me by, you know, mm. getting pissed off because I don't give a shit. Right. And then all the other guys started to respect me because they saw that I didn't back down. Right. Whereas most people, I mean, they're like, whoa, this motherfucker, he knows that we could all like pounce his ass. And he's still, and he's still keeping and his hole in his ground. Anywhere. And I, and after that day, one guy came up to me then like a day later and he was like, yo, you know. You know, I, we, we, I respect the fact that, you know, you're, you you know, you just, you're, you're, you're who you are. Right, right. You're not, you're not pretender. You're not a pretender, you know? And right. so I, I started gaining respect in, 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 incrementally. And mm-hmm. it wasn't like a, a, a physical thing. Like I wouldn't right, right. Want to get in a fight with him because I liked the guy. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was hilarious. Yeah, but you got to defend yourself. Yeah, but yeah. I, I was more defending like, dude, like I, I, I'm just, why are you coming at me? Like, I'm trying to explain to you. I'm coming at it as a comedian. I'm just being funny. You're right. Taking it like I'm attacking your manhood. Like, you see how we have two different ways of thinking here? I wasn't trying to disrespect right. you. And I know you're not trying to disrespect me. You just don't understand what happened. Right. And after that, like, I started getting more and more. They, they got a little. They never became my friend. But right. what happens? The, 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 the tour ends. Meanwhile, they would have like Fight Club every night after the show. Yeah. Where they would be, go in the back in the locker room, and they would all like squ- they take turns squaring up with each other and slap fighting. Jesus, uh, I didn't Christ. know that was like a thing. Slap boxing, yeah, yeah. And I was like, like YG is like going with his bodyguard, and and and, and his bodyguard's like two twenty, two thirty, jacked. Mm-hmm. And, I'm like, I went, I tried to break it up. Like, I, I, that was another white move. I'm like, what the fuck? Holy shit. Stop. Why isn't anyone stopping this? Stop it. Break it up. Why? She's got to go on tomorrow night. And YG's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, we do this every night, you know? And they uh-huh. like bloody lip and they're throwing each other over tables. And I was like, white guys don't do that. Like, white guys, like, if one guy gets, because one guy always gets mad at the other guy and then it turns into a real fight right right I never do that with my friends because right, right right maybe when i was 15 not yeah, when yeah. I'm 
not in my 30s or 40s, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's like a thing they do. They're like, no, that's what we do. We do that shit. So right. all these different things. So anyway, I do the tour. It ends. Um, the I, I, Two years later, they call me to go to Coachella. I uh-huh. do Coachella. 2019, 2,000 wow. people. YG's manager calls me one night. He's like, I'm here with YG. What are you doing? I'm like, oh, I just, I'm hanging out. I just got home. They're like, hey, you want to come do Coachella? I'm like, shit, yeah. And I go back. I'm on a plane. I show up. I go out to LA. I meet up with them where Coachella is, uh, which is out near Palm Springs or whatever. And uh, and they're and they're and they're hugging me. They're all really like, all his buddies. Oh, like, like soon as you showed up, you were like, oh my dude, what the fuck? And yeah. how did you respond? Like you don't even you didn't even know that you were making friends. <laughs> yeah. they, I could. They were Dante. They were happy to see me because that, that two years earlier that we we developed a bond, right? And, and the answer, that you weren't even aware of. No. And the answer to your question was is that I when I tell people this all the time, I had my own stereotypes of them. They had them of me, and I came back and and to this day, like I'll go on these white shows. Where guys would be like, oh, my God, dude, you're with a bunch of gang members. Oh, my God. And they're already like they want to shit on the gang. Yeah, yeah. Drive-by shootings. Oh, my, you know, bloods. Right. Like, dude, you don't get it. Like, I'm defending them. I go, you right. don't get it. I go, how is that different? I go, you don't understand because you didn't grow up like them. Did you grow up where on your street, if you went a street, you know, down that you might get stabbed to death? So you have to join a group of guys that live on your street to protect you. Did you grow up like that? No, you mm. didn't. And if you grew up like that, you'd be in a gang too. But right. they have these labels. It's all about labels. And, yeah, yeah. You know, they think gang member blood. You're like, you know, you're instantly a thug. You're, you're, you're a criminal. And most of these guys on the, on the bus with, they're not criminals. Right, they, right. They had to join each other for protection. The circumstances. That's yeah. what the circumstances required. So I'm, I'm white, getting furious at white people for being so <laughs> dumb that they don't know that you're attacking my brothers that I lived on a bus with. Now, let me ask you this. That when you went back and you saw and then and you showed up, the whole crew was still there. Yeah. The whole crew was still there. Yeah. And they just threw luck. They were just like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yeah. Now, if you if and I already know the answer to this, like if you ran into them again, like say if you ended up somewhere and you ran into them at a at a, you know doing something or whatever, not even the that that kind of bond that they would have you will be like that forever. forever. You know what I mean, you could be fifty and run into these motherfuckers, and they would. It, it, it's 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 yeah. it's an interesting so, thing. So YG called me to do his video. I don't know if you guys can look it up. You can tell. I'll look it up. We'll look it up. YG's number one hit song on his new album was Jealous. That was okay. his big hit. I think was it called Jealous? Wait. Uh, this one called Jealous, yeah. YG yeah. Jealous. So th- if you type in on YouTube Jealous parody, I play Trump on there. Okay. And it's me doing lip syncing his song. Okay. He's not even in the video. It's me. The whole video is me. Oh, really? So he called me right before the election, uh, what, a year and a half ago, to uh-huh. come out as Trump. And I flew out to L.A. again twice in a week. And we shot the video. And the whole video is me with a bunch of strippers. And the whole video is me as Trump. <laughs> right, right. Got over like it's got a couple million views. Yeah, yeah. And and so he kept calling me to give me work. And that's so, the other thing is the work is a, is a is a a byproduct of the friendship. Yeah. Oh my like God. nobody. Watching, we don't let you, you don't make you make money if I don't like you. I'm watching the right. video. I don't want. I can't put it up because they'll take it down for copyright. Why? They'll take it yeah. down. It's not. There's no nudity in it. No, no. No, for but they'll take it down for copyright. Because YG owns it. Oh, whatever, I so see. we can't because we post this. But it, so, the, the paint job they do on you is ridiculous. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. They went for oh, comedy, not accuracy, on this, and it's great. Yeah. It's yeah. just. It's, great. So, it's over the top. Yeah, it's so over the top, and the suit is so baggy and un uh, untailored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that that video. So yeah, they. To, to answer your question, I, I learned a lot because I really empathize with these guys the way they grew up. And many of them, they don't have dads. They didn't have a family unit. They didn't have people looking out for them. And their only family were the people were their friends. Right, right. So I really developed a, a fond respect for them. And for whatever areas of their life, of their being that was unpolished, you know, because some of them are, you know, they're like they're straight. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
I got it. They didn't have the opportunities I had. So I, I in a lot of ways, I feel I feel very bonded to them and close to them. And I felt sorry for them because I was older than them. I mean, I'm in my. Yeah, my you're not a kid. Yeah. Time. And and yeah. And these are they're in their 20s. So I almost felt like like their uncle, you know, like. I want to help you guys. Let me let me let me teach you a little bit what I know. You know, right, right. And uh, and I think they learned a lot about me that I I, I wasn't a, a threat. So there was a lot of learning going on. So that was what was beautiful about it because you really don't when you get close to somebody. I would say like guys that fight in the military and you go off to a war, you play in a team. They're they're, they're your brothers. It doesn't yeah. matter. You, in the, the first thing you see is the color. It's like if you see someone with a with a limp or in a wheelchair immediately like that's, that's what you see right and, and then when you break past that you don't see them anymore in a chair or in a and that's we're just brothers you know and that's how, and that's really how it is and i would if yg called me today and said listen i want to do something i would always work with him i thought he was nothing but awesome mm-hmm. and I, I think he's a great guy you look he's got a checkered i mean he's been shot i think like five or six times mm-hmm. um you know he's had a rough go of it i can't imagine growing up growing up the way they grow up you know yeah. And I had, his, I had his grandmother kissing me on the, on the cheek, taking <laughs> pictures with me. So it was so cool. You know, what's what's even interesting about, what's really interesting about that as well is like you learn, um, and, and this is something I talk about a lot of times when you talk about comedy, is like comedy, what the funny part of comedy is figuring out what the humanity, the line of humanity is through, through a shared... Um, uh, through, through a shared, I guess, existence. So, um, like, I, I I do this joke now where I go, um, you know, I, um, on three different occasions, I've had dudes pull guns out on me. And when I was young, I fought them, right? Because yeah. was, that was what we did. I go, now, that sounds like I'm bragging until I tell you that I'm afraid of spiders, right? And <laughs> so if you try to rob me with a gun, I'll fuck you up. But if you have hairy arms and you move them like this, I'll fuck you up. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, here, take my wallet, right? Yeah. And then I go, there's, I'm afraid of spiders the same way women are afraid of getting their period while wearing white pants. And so what you, you start yeah. to understand that fear is something, it, it's human. And yeah. because it's human, it, it, we just have to make it relevant to who you are, what your fear is, is not my fear, what their fear is, not their fear, so on and so forth. Um, You know, you know, Kareem Green, Kareem Green is scared of pigeons. Oh, like, yeah. and Kareem will fight anybody. But you throw a pigeon at him, you could, you could rob him by pigeon, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's an interesting thing that you, you start to see that you, humanity and people, it was really, because you and I have had these really long discussions and stuff, and it just, it's, it's interesting, because I, the, when you first started telling this story, I don't know if you felt this, Harry, but like mm. I, I was like, oh, they're going to accept him. Eventually, yeah. Eventually, they accept him. him, but you're I also talking about right gang that, culture. Though. Yeah, you gang know, culture is a little different. Yeah, gang culture is is it's like it's re, like you can't that line. But then it's it's interesting having that learned experience, and then you go back, and then they go, ah, did they did they still call you Trump or did they call you Bob or? Oh. They still call me Trump. <laughs> they definitely Everybody call you Trump the name. whole time, and not even in a bad way. They're like, yo, Trump, you want some pizza? We're all getting pizza. Yeah, yeah it was a term of endearment. Right. Yeah, yeah. IG yeah. follows me on Twitter, and like. These guys know they can call me anytime. And it really comes down to trust. Yeah. It's not about ethnic, culture, creed, gender. It's about trust. When you trust somebody, all of those walls come down. Yeah. You know? And it's like when Dante, when someone meets you, they're going to look at you and they're, they're going to like, and it's just normal. And it's not racist. Yeah. It's just people will create. Well, it's a bias. You got to call it what it is. It's a bias. It's a, we, we exactly. have an, an bias. innate bias. We all have an innate and bias. It's not always, and it's not always about a color thing. Someone could look at a, 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 a small black guy could look at you and you're a big, intimidating black guy. Yeah, I get, the, you know, I get it. Guy, yeah. A badass. He's a tough guy. He's not gentle. He's hard. He, you know, he's, he's rigid. And you're, you're nothing like that. There's a right. part, you have a shell, a veneer that's, that can be that if you choose. Oh, yeah, we can get it, we can get greasy if we got them. But right. that- there's another part of you that's a very loving, caring guy. That's you know that 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 has looking for a human connection, and that's that's what makes you 
uh, what's the word? You're, we're complicated beings. We're not right. that simple. Layered. So someone could look at you with the tattoos and be like, oh, this guy looks like this. And you're nothing like that. And right, right, so right. when we got to know each other, these guys, all of once we developed a trust as human beings with each other, all the other, all that other shit, you realize how stupid it is. It's all minutia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I see your girl fucking with the bananas in the back. Yeah, no, she was sucking on one. About a ago. <laughs> so yeah. I was gonna yeah. ask are you, are you, you and your girl still together? Tell I said hi. Doctor <laughs> says hi. That's his way. That's his way of hitting on you. Doctor <laughs> will always find a way to try to bang one of my girlfriends. <laughs> well, I you? mean, I've been lucky a lot of years, Bobby. <laughs> I know you have. Well, there's a reason why they call you the pimp. <laughs> That that's so dope, man. Um, what's me? I, so y'all are living together. You and your lady living together so now? No, started staying with each other. Me and Denise have been together eleven years. Denise, yeah. eleven. Wow, years. that's crazy. Because I met I I I met Denise when you when you guys first got together. Did you did you ever meet her? Yes. She did. She did? I, don't, it's probably I would tell her to come over, but she's not wearing makeup, so. <laughs> I, I don't want her to, I don't want her, <laughs> I, I want you to at least have a filter on. She's just, <laughs> uh, but Denise is great because she's as disgusting and perverted as I am. Yeah, yeah. As we are as comedians. Yeah, yeah. She was the only girl that when I met her, there's nothing, because I, I always try to find the line, like how far can I go? Right. Oh, uh, I, we oh, know, man. we know. Yeah, I can't offend her. Like, it's unbelievable. <laughs> no matter what I do, and she's, oh, she's filthy, she's, she's, Thinks like she's got a porno in her head. She's she's just irreverent. I, I don't know. I, I can't do it. My other ex girlfriends, you say one little thing and they flip the fuck out. They go, yeah. That's why she's your ex girlfriend. That's why she's your ex girlfriend. Who needs that? Right. right. Yeah, so, who needs uh, that? Where's the how did, how did she respond to all this? I'm sorry, Harry. I didn't mean to cut no, you no, off. No, no, nothing. Just... How, did, how, did, how did she, you know, I mean, because you're on the road a lot. I mean, I know you always did the road a lot. How does that affect? Well, it's, I guess well, it's better, right? <laughs> here's the thing, because we're talking, it's a relationship show. Yeah, yeah. You have to find somebody, and this is, I, I, I think this is really for anybody. You, you got to find someone who, who is independent, um, because I, I used to date a lot of girls that, like, they didn't have anything on going on their own end. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you touch on this all the time on your show. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have, and this could be anybody, and you don't have your own shit going on. Yeah. And then you find someone and you try to make them the center of your universe and you revolve around them. It puts a tremendous amount of pressure on you right. because you're relying on them to give you happiness. And it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on them to give you that. And so right. like Denise is a very independent woman. I mean, she, right. she's got her own hobbies and interests. So when I go away, you know, I'm not worried about her like calling me 12 times a day going, oh, my God, like, what are you doing? And being mm -hmm. insecure. She's very secure with her. You know, with her femininity, with her womanhood, with our relationship, she's because she's a bad bitch. A bad bitch. <laughs> Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> she's yelling out Brooklyn. <laughs> she's a Brooklyn girl too. Yeah. So like, you know, they don't fuck around. You know, she's where in Brooklyn? Where in Brooklyn is she from? I'm Brooklyn, Denise. Um, Please ye like yell out a black area so we. No, feel she's gonna say she said Bay. She's gonna say Howard Beach. Yeah. No, Flatbush. Yeah. Flatbush. Flatbush. Uh, uh, yeah, I got run out of there. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> they ran you out. Why? Pass, What's that? Pass Avenue K. You, you uh, couldn't go past Avenue K. <laughs> why? Is Flatbush like a mix? Is not like a diverse? Well, Flatbush character? is real. Is is heavy West Indian immigrants now? But oh, pass okay. pass um pass like Avenue K is is very Jewish. Oh, and Italian, really? and so like there was a time if you were if you went past Avenue K, you you could you could get you could get hit with a bat. You know what I mean? Like as a black guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But so, my dad was a cop in Crown Heights. Okay. Oh, it gets better. Oh, so yeah. Well, tell it. I live in Crown. I grew up in Crown Heights. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, he probably arrested you. Man, I, well, I I never got caught. I didn't say I never did anything, but I never got caught. What what precinct was he in? 71st. 71st precinct. Now, 71st and 77 was the worst precincts ever. Um, Denise probably got some of that drug money stashed away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, how do you think we went to Disney World every year? <laughs> Denise's dad was, you know, during the, the Crown uh, Crown Heights riots. Yeah, yeah. He was in 
all that shit. Yeah. And um, now I'm going to, and you know, speaking of which, we're talking about race, but also like her dad. I come from a different place than her dad. Her dad, yeah, yeah. Was a cop. I have a lot of friends that are cops, but her dad saw a lot of really horrible shit. Yeah. So her dad, when I met him through my relationship with him, I didn't understand him. You know, he's, he's kind of inward. He's trying to, he's trying to, he's, he's introverted. He's kind of brash. He's not really one um, um, that uh, is really gregarious and outgoing. And he didn't really let me in for a long time as her boyfriend. Right. And, and I was like, what's his problem? But I didn't understand. See, here's the difference. Like not even a race thing. This is a guy that it's generational. It's a cop. It's also a cop thing. Yeah. Old school. Italian cop. He's going. He's had a lot of trauma that he's seen. He he said he's like, look, I don't. I mean, I I saw babies, you know, in in he microwaves. And yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's trying. He goes to therapy. You know, he goes to therapy. He's had a lot of trauma. So well, like, that's that's crazy because you, you you so many of those dudes don't do therapy, and they're 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 the way they comfort themselves is through alcohol and drugs and 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 then they and then they're in a like they're together like the support it's like the the whole it's kind of like the whole proud boy thing how there's a website or like the in the incel dudes they're all together comforting each other in this kind of misery, yeah. but there's they're in an echo chamber where you don't have. So it's interesting that he's an old school dude who's actually going to therapy, which is so prog progressive. Yeah, yeah. Like that's is. a really progressive thing, especially for an old Italian dude who yeah. was a cop. You know, like there was a um, there's a documentary about the Seven Seven, which is the 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 precinct next to it where they was, you know, it's like legendary about they were robbing drug dealers and killing murders she it was, saw it. She yeah. Saw it. yeah crazy and the, and honest the 771 wasn't there was a lot of dudes from the 71 i mean that was kind of the practice of i mean the biggest thing was going on in the 77 but the 71 was interesting but how did you how did you breach that how were you able to breach that with her dad yeah uh well i think it, again I, we talk about it, it, it's trust I think it's getting to learn and know more about me as a man and maybe developing a respect for me yeah. uh, and knowing that I'm a good guy. Yeah. I think that warmed him up to me. I mean, I don't think he was ever nice to any of her boyfriends. It wasn't that he was mean. He just No, no, no. He, he was apathetic. Well, and also, I, you got to understand a, a cop's mentality is always they're always observing. Yeah. Yeah. They're always what, you know, what doesn't fit in this? What? And, and, and again, what, it's just. And it's again like I it's it's human beings being human beings. I'm I'm coming from a place of like looking at it on the outside, like what's his problem? Like yeah, you know, yeah. I'm a good guy. Why is it I felt disrespected by him but that he wasn't so loving and, and more welcoming? <laughs> Love me, I'm funny, I'm great. What's wrong yeah, with you? I'm a good guy. I'm then, charming. Yeah, and he's probably looking at it like, Well, why doesn't this guy show me respect? And why does this guy <laughs> shut up? <laughs> yeah. Why is he throwing his corny jokes at me over dinner? This motherfucker is so dumb. But but he has, okay, coming from his generation, a lot of stereotypes. Oh yeah, yeah. and a lot of, you know, embedded views. Bias. Of, yes, a, embedded bias. And I'm sitting at the dinner table with Denise, and Denise wasn't raised like that. But she, we're hearing stuff that we're like, whoa, like, you know, that's sad that you think that way. But I real, I, I get mad. I'd be like, Denise, if he says that shit again, I'm just gonna get up and leave the table. Uh -huh. But then I'm like. But then another part of me was like, he doesn't know any better because he was only exposed to the worst of the worst of every different culture. Yeah, yeah. So there's these things about someone's culture or creed, and he's being somewhat, um, uh, what's the word? You know, he's, he's being, to me, disrespectful about it. Right. It's because he's never, I know if he was around people that were not of that ilk because right 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 well i mean you 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 you're a police officer so you 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 deal with the worst the right. the 1% of the people who are worse but they but you got to you but here's the thing some of the worst individuals in the world were, were these cops they were bigger criminals i mean if you look at the oh, yeah. if you get a chance check out the 77 documentary oh, wow. they were murderers drug dealers just yeah. horrible but what's interesting is i think sometimes we give a little little bit too much 
too much uh, uh, wiggle room for that because you didn't treat those other cops, those dirty cops, the same way. You didn't judge them yeah. in that same way. Somehow they were family men and went wrong and things. Did it, but you don't give the same. You don't give the same. The same wiggle room for people of a different culture 100%. of whatever. Yeah. And so, so it, it's a weird thing. It's like I've I've evolved. I I I get how we say I feel sorry for it, but I don't. I mean, not not the father, but what I'm saying is. This happens because all you have to do is turn it around and say, do I want somebody to treat me that way? Would I want somebody yeah. to treat my daughter that way or my son that way? Yeah. And if you say no, then your actions are unacceptable. Yeah. See, the, the problem is you don't see people as in the same way. When it's turned around, it's different for them. Yeah. And and one of the things that I think I respect, I've always respected about you is that um, you're not a hypocrite. So if I said A, B, C, and D, and it was true, you would go, like, good point, I never thought about that, as opposed to the sense of me defending a position that I don't. I don't really know. I mean, I, I, Bobby, I know you got to get out of here. It's late as yeah. shit, but I, I'll plug plug whatever you want to plug. Um, anything you got going Denise. on? I'm going to plug Denise, I think, at some point. I, um, I mean, I think you should. But uh, um, Social media, can we anything. See that if we need to. No, I just if people want to go on, I, uh, I, I, on Instagram, it's at Bob DeBono. I do. I put up a lot of funny videos on TikTok, uh, YouTube channel, and uh, – and I know we didn't get too much into relationships. But uh, but this was a great story, and I yeah, mean, yeah, I yeah. Can't, really good story. You know, um, Bobby, I love you, man. I miss you, bro. I, I hope we could get together, brother. I really hope up. so too. I'll see you. You know, we'll be around. We ain't going nowhere. And me so, and we, get, we get in fights all the time, so I'm happy to come on and talk about this disaster of a relationship. All right. All right, we'll do that again. We'll come back and do that again. I love you, bro. Take care, man. I love you, man. All right. Take care. Yo, uh, Harry, plug it. Uh, you can go to all my stuff at Harry Turjani, and that's where all my stuff is on social media. And most importantly, go over to the uh, go over to the Patreon, where we're going to be doing a bonus content. Uh, we're going to be answering some listener mail and then uh, giving out some more relationship advice. So, Patreon.com/slash/Manschool202. Uh, you know me. Google me, bitch. Uh, just uh, all my social media. One-on-one consultations. DanteNero.com. Click on consult. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolutions being podcasted. I love y'all, man. Don't forget the Patreon. Uh, sign up, patreon.com uh, slash manschool202. Peace. We out of here.